as we're looking to prove this limit, we need the definition of a limit. Now let me step you through a couple of these symbols. First of all, this double arrow means if and only if. It's used a ton in definitions. Um, next is that upside down A and our epsilon. The upside down A means for every. So it doesn't matter what your epsilon value is. And this happens to be your distance in the Y direction. Next is that uh, backwards E, and that means there exists. We're going to end up finding an appropriate delta value. So that is our delta. And then the most important piece is this conditional statement at the bottom. This is your roadmap for doing these proofs. We are going to start with this inequality, zero less than the absolute value of x minus a. That's just the distance between x and a. Here in this example, a is 5 is less than delta. So that means that as we shrink down to the value that we're looking at the limit at in the x direction, we're also shrinking down to the limit in the y direction. So this implies that the difference between f of x and l is less than epsilon. So using that as our roadmap, let's go ahead and go through this example. Now I like to start by setting up a grid and in my grid, I'm gonna have my work on one side and then my proof is gonna be over there on the left hand side. Now on the right hand side, I'm gonna go ahead and put my work and as I'm putting my work together, I wanna to start by defining what everybody is. I need A, A is the value that we're approaching, which is five. I need f of x, f of x is 3x plus 2, 3x plus 2, my limit value is 17. I also need to define my delta statement, so that's going to be 0 less than x minus a, but a is 5, is less than delta, and my epsilon statement, f of x, which is 3x plus 2, minus L, which is 17, is less than epsilon. Now, if you need to memorize these statements, think alphabetical. In the X direction, we're gonna be limited um, with the delta, delta comes before epsilon, and then the Y direction, that limiting value is our epsilon. Um, so now that we've got this, I wanna work my way backwards so that I can find there exists a delta. So I'm gonna find delta in terms of epsilon. And I'm gonna do it by just working through my epsilon statement. So I end up with 3x plus 2 minus 17. That's gonna be 3x minus 15 is less than epsilon. I can factor out a 3, so 3 x minus 5 is less than epsilon. And notice what we've got. I've got my x minus 5 here, and I've got my x minus 5 here. So I'm just going to divide everybody by 3, and I end up with x minus 5 is less than epsilon thirds. And I know then that epsilon thirds can be our delta. Now, a really, really great hint here is that if you're working with a linear function, you can just divide by that lead coefficient. So delta is epsilon thirds. But I do like my work there because I'm gonna end up using it just backwards. So for our proof, I start with that for every statement and I really use this definition as my roadmap. So I start off by saying for every epsilon greater than zero, there exists a delta. Well, we found it. So we're going to go ahead and let delta equal epsilon thirds. Because epsilon is greater than zero, this delta, which is epsilon thirds, is also greater than zero for free. So I don't need to state that. I'm going to show that my delta statement, so I'm going to say such that. You could also say and, you can vary your language here a little bit. Zero less than x minus a, but a is equal to five, is less than, I wanna really show that I'm starting with this delta statement, and then let's go ahead and work the math through. Now I'm letting delta be epsilon thirds. 
I don't need the zero at the beginning anymore, so I'm gonna drop that. So x minus five is less than delta, which is epsilon thirds. And you'll notice that right now I am at this statement and I'm working my way backwards up to this statement here. So the work really is kind of nice. I wanna multiply everything by three, so I can cancel that three, so I get three. Absolute value, x minus five is less than epsilon. I can bring that three through, I'm just doing the math here. Three x minus 15 is less than epsilon. So that puts me right here. And I know that I can go ahead and separate it so it looks exactly now like my epsilon statement. So I am just going to do that. So I have three, x plus two in parentheses, minus 17 is less than epsilon. So what I've shown is that if I'm starting by limiting the difference in the x direction, it automatically limits the difference in the y direction. So that delta statement did lead to my epsilon statement. So I am ready for my conclusion. Let me get rid of what I've got there in yellow. And for my conclusion, I'm gonna use my therefore statement. So three little dots in a triangle means therefore. So therefore, and I'm gonna put my conclusion here. The limit as x approaches five of three x plus two does in fact equal 17. Let's do one more, and I would love it if you paused this to see how far that you can get on your own. I'll give you a hint, this is another linear function, so I know automatically what I want delta to be. Let me go ahead and start working this one through. Okay, so as I'm working this one through, I definitely wanna put my work on one side and my proof on the other side. So here comes my work. It's always helpful, even if you can get to that shortcut for your delta, to go ahead and start by defining everything. Here, a is equal to two. My function is five x minus one, and my limit value is equal to nine. Next, I need my epsilon statement and my delta statement. I'm gonna do that delta statement first. Zero is less than x minus two is less than delta. And then my epsilon statement, f of x, which is five x minus one minus L, which is nine, is less than epsilon. Now that we've got this done, my job is to take this statement that we've got here in terms of epsilon and work it so that we can get to this statement. Really what we're doing here is we're gonna find, if you can see what I've got there in yellow, we're gonna find what we need delta to be. Okay, so working that guy through, I get um, 5x minus one minus nine, that's gonna be 5x minus 10, is less than epsilon. I can factor out my five. This works nice every single time. I love it, less than epsilon. Divide both sides by five. X minus two is less than epsilon over five. And take a look what we've got. We've got that delta statement. So that means that I know that delta, which I actually knew at the beginning, the delta is equal to epsilon divided by five. Okay, so here comes our proof. So in our proof, we're gonna use our definition starting with that for every statement. So I say for every epsilon greater than zero, let delta equal epsilon divided by five. Now I wanna show that my delta statement leads me to my epsilon statement. So I'll say such that. And then I've got zero less than x minus a. So x minus two is less than delta. But I know that delta is epsilon fifths. So x minus two less than epsilon fifths. We're gonna multiply both sides by five. So five x minus two is less than epsilon. You can do a quick check and see where you are. We're right here as we're working our way up to that epsilon statement and I'm almost there. I'm gonna multiply that five through and I get five x minus 10 
is less than epsilon. And I know that I can go ahead and separate it just like I've got there into f of x minus l. So this is going to be f of x. So 5x minus 1 minus l, which is 9, is less than epsilon. And I have shown that limiting this in the x direction leads to limiting by epsilon in the y direction. And I'm ready for my conclusion. So I'm going to use therefore with three dots. So therefore, the limit as x approaches, rewriting that original statement, to of 5x minus 1 equals 9. And we are done. You are doing fantastic. Take a look at this next video on these limit proofs using quadratic functions. You got this.